Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. In the chapel, we have Proverbs 13, 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathers by labor shall increase. So, yep, just still keeping it working hard. Um, okay, so I don't have anything off the hook. I have been working on my around the world inspired, light colored thing. Um, last week I still had the white row to finish, to finish out that round. I have finished that one and I have three sides of the, uh, lavender here, purple, whatever you want to call it. And so I've got this one up here that still has just the white on it. I do have, um, let's see. I've been working on it. I have the two corners and two innards. So seven, well, six and a half. I got to finish this one and then I have six. So once I get those done, then I'll have the final round and I'll do, then I move on to the pink. And then after the pink, um, it will be turned this way and start going around. So I should have this line of blue that comes up all the way through it. And the rest of it is round and round and round. So it's getting there. Going to have the purple one done um, probably this week. And then I'll be working on the pink one. After the pink one, then the fun begins because then I get to figure out how I'm going to turn it sideways and make it look square. I have it in my head. Sometimes when I have something in my head, it doesn't really work that way. So we shall see. <laughs> All right. Um, what else? In the crochet, that is all I have. So let's just go down the, in the dye pots. I haven't dyed anything. I haven't spun anything. Um, in the fields. So, with this drought, we are setting records here. It's one of the hottest years that we've seen in a long, long time. The garden is struggling to use the water just to stay green. It's not producing any fruit, so therefore I think I'm going to let it go. Um, the only thing that it is producing is I've gotten quite a few cucumbers out of it. Now it's blooming again, but not producing any cucumbers. So, yeah, that, that means I have plenty in there. Uh, tomatoes, I haven't gotten a whole lot. I had one plant out there that just went crazy. It had blooms everywhere. I was like, oh, we're going to have a lot of tomatoes. Not one of those blooms has produced fruit. So, I think I've gotten four or five tomatoes this year. They're just, the ground is too dry. Um, and the heat is taking it out of them. Like I said, they wilt every day and I get out there and there just isn't enough water in the ground to keep them from wilting or, or fighting for their life every day. So, um, yeah, pretty much. I think I'm gonna let it go. Okra. Roommate, okra is doing great. I don't need okra. So I told roommate I would continue to water the okra just because, um, so uh, that'll get rid of like half the garden. I'm just going to mow over it and be done with it. And um, Like I said, everything is just fighting to stay green, fighting to stay alive. And I haven't gotten that one pepper. So just a rough year for gardening. Um, it is what it is, you know. So, um, all right. In the farmhouse is kind of, <coughs> oh, excuse me, is kind of interwoven with, I have sinus strange, uh, is interwoven with RG's world. I work from five minutes till nine to 10 after six every day. And in between all of that, um, we've been trying to find a new truck. Now, RJ found a truck that fit his budget everything he could do. He went up to, um, 
into Kansas to get it about an hour from the house. And he uh, had, I'm looking to see, let me bring him up here. He went up there and the guy had said that there was an exhaust code and something else wrong with the, oh, a tire thing. Um, he says that you can watch this, the tire pressure sensor and within a few weeks, it's right back to acting up. So he says it probably needs to be replaced, but you can look at a tire and tell whether it's flat or not. So tire sensor isn't exactly something that we worry about. The other code was an exhaust code. And that we do worry about. So this is a truck. I don't know what you guys are seeing, but this is a truck. I'm hoping y'all are seeing that. This is the interior. Everything looked good. The only thing that it actually was really clean. The only thing is, is on this seat right here, you can see that there's some ripping there and there, but it's on the driver's side seat where you get in and out a lot. And it is a 2015 it's a diesel power stroke. So RJ went up, looked at it, sent me those pictures. Mom, it looks clean, looks taken care of. Um, there is one scuff on the cab. The guy explained that he pulls a trailer with it and he had something happen with the trailer and it ended up crunching the bed. So he put a brand new flatbed on it. The brand new flatbed had never been pulled. It didn't even have the ball in it. But he had the ball there in the back seat of the car, truck. He says it goes with it. So all you have to do is put the ball in it. RJ says, okay, I can put a ball in. Um, then he said he took it. He asked the guy while they were driving around, he says, can I take this and get the codes read? He says, yes. He says, my code reader is in evidence in Nowata County right now because it was stolen from my truck. He says, okay. So he takes it up there and it did it through the exhaust code and RJ says you know I, I like the truck it looks good but I'm not a mechanic so I'm going to pay somebody to fix that sensor and the guy says well I'll tell you what I'll take $500 off the truck that'll give you the money you know because RJ says I don't have any money to put into it um, this is kind of unexpected and wiped me out and so uh, the gentleman said okay I'll take $500 off um, the sensor itself is like a hundred and something. And if you're paying by the hour, it's like 90 to $120 for a mechanic to put it on. He said it shouldn't take more than two hours. They figured out between the two of them, eh, 500. He says, okay. RJ says, all right, I'm going to take the truck with me. If you don't mind, he says, I'll write you a check, take the truck. And he says, and then can I have my mechanic check it out? when he can get to it, you know, within a day or so. And then I'll let you know if you send the, and we can, if I don't want the truck, I'll bring it back to you and you can just give me my check back. I says, okay. So, and the, the guy seems very honest, very, you know, he doesn't seem to be pulling the wool over anybody's eyes. He's been up front about everything that we found. Um, he told us about crunching the bed. That's why he put the new flat bed on there. He says, I really had big dreams for this truck. And he says, right now, I just need out from underneath the payment. I'm not using it. So it's not really doing me any good. Same reason that we're looking at selling my big trailer. You know, RJ just with gas prices, it's costing too much to pull it. It's sitting there. It, it's not getting any use. And I'm still making a payment on it. So, you know, we get that part. Um, then he got it home and he went ahead and he put the ball in it. He brought it down here. He had to find a spare tire. Okay. That was another thing is it didn't have a spare tire. So we spent, um, part of the day running around. I, I think I, we ended up finding one in Sepulpa and went and got it and it's a brand new tire. I won't let him drive a truck without a spare. I don't care if they come with those little pumps. This is horse and horses and trucks and I don't, nope, spare tire, put it on the ground, get where you're going. <laughs> so, um, I, even when I got my car, if you remember, RJ made fun of me, um, cause I went and it took me 
four or five days to find a spare tire for my car. Then he looks at me and goes, that's great, mom. He says, but you don't have a jack in your car to put it on. So I had to go buy a jack because it come, my car came with a little air pump. And I don't do air pumps. We don't live in town. If you live in town and you have a little car that gets flat, yes, you most likely can pump it up and get it to someone or there's AAA or there's, we don't live like that. And, and people forget about rural areas. We drive 10 minutes to a small town that doesn't have a mechanic. Our mechanic is two towns over and over 30 minutes away. And that's not even our full-time one. You know, that's not a shop. I mean, that's just our mechanic, dude. He does it out of his house. You know? <laughs> so you want a shop with a mechanic and blah, blah, blah. You have to go to a bigger town. And we live, you know, 45 minutes away from anything. So it's not like you can take it to the neighborhood garage and get it fixed. It doesn't work that way for us. So I don't want an air pump. I want a tire. So we spent the day, got it, ran over to Sepulpa, picked it up. It's got a decent tire on it. So, um, check the pressure, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, uh, put the ball in it. Anyway, yesterday, today is Wednesday. Yeah. Yesterday he took the truck to the mechanic. It was the first day the mechanic could look at it. They hooked it up to their machine and he says, okay, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. All of them were little things. And he said, you know, and RJ always asked him, would you drive, jump in and drive to California? And the guy goes, not without putting it through my shop. He says, these little things can lead to other things that are bigger. He says, okay. So he called the guy back and he says, you know, I'm just, I'm going to have to bring the truck back. And the guy goes, Why? And so he told him, he says, I took it to my mechanic. He said, this has got to be fixed. This has got to be fixed. This has got to be, you know. And the guy goes, well, I understand. I just, I just don't have money to put in. I can't do a project truck. I need a truck that will haul, pull horses. You know, my good truck is what got wrecked. Not one that, he's got one that he can get by with, run around town, blah, blah, blah. It also has a water leak, you know. So it... He can't find the water leak. He was saving money to get it into the shop to get it taken care of. And then this one got wrecked. And so all of his money went into this one. And he's like, this is crazy. Mom, this is just crazy. And I said, well, God has a plan. Just, you know, pray. And, and so he called the guy back and says, I can't do another project truck. I just don't have the money. He says, if I had a little bit put into it, and to fix all these things, he says, I would take a chance on this truck and keep it. Says, but I don't have the two grand that they're saying it's going to cost to keep this truck. And so the guy goes, oh, I understand. He says, all right, well, you know, let me get off work. And he says, um, you might have to bring it back tomorrow. I don't have, you know, RJ says, okay. And at this point, we've already bought a spare tire and a ball and put the ball in. So RJ said that he, and I'm at work a lot of this, so I'm just getting phone calls and texts and, you know, RJ texted me about the mechanics said this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. I said, okay, you know, I got off at lunch and I called him and I said, okay, so what do you want to do? And he says, if it's going to be like this, I've got to take it back. He says, I can't do this. And I said, okay, I get that, you know, so anyway, about, Two hours later, apparently the guy, I didn't know until after I got off work at this point, I think the truck was going back. Um, I got off work, got a, a text right before I was getting off. It says, can you call me when you get off? And I said, okay. So apparently the gentleman called him back and he says, look, he says, I don't need the truck. And I really want out from underneath this payment. He says, I'll tell you what I'll do. I can either take and give you a thousand dollars back and let you do the, you know, either you can do the repairs on a thousand, you know, because RJ told me, he says, some of the little stuff I might be able to do, but I, you know, we're getting into a mechanic having to do stuff. He said, I can either give you a thousand dollars back or 
I will pay 50% of the bill, but I want to see all the receipts. That means no work done by RJ, just the mechanic stuff. RJ says, okay, let me think on this. So he called his mechanic back and he said, look, this is what the guy's offering. And he said, and the mechanic said, if it was me, I'd take a thousand and walk away. You know, take a thousand in the truck and walk away. But he says, I'm a mechanic. He says, there's a difference. He says, now, for you, he says, there are a few of these things that you might be able to do. You might be able to do this, 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 and that would save you here at the shop. Um, he said, on the other hand, we could get into it to fix the one thing that, that I'm pretty sure you can't fix. And he said, you could end up with a $2,000 bill from me, or you could end up, you know, with a $700 bill from me. He says, it depends on what is causing this. And, it, and the, the issue is, is that there is a water leak in the secondary coolant. And that coolant's for the transmission. So if the transmission gets hot, it's going to cause other problems. So um, he said, if the water pump is going out in that coolant, that's going to be your big job. If it's just leaking from somewhere else and we have to replace a gasket or a bolt or tighten it up or whatever, you'll get off a little expensive. But push comes to shove. Um, RJ calls me and he says, so what would you do, mom? Would you keep the truck or, you know, take the thousand, half the bills with him or, you know, because if it, if the bills are only $700 at the mechanic's office, that shop, the guy's only going to pay three fifty. And I asked RJ, I said, well, where's he getting his numbers? And he said, he called his mechanic and his mechanic gave him an estimate on everything that RJ had said that our mechanic had said was wrong with the truck. That mechanic said it shouldn't pay $2,000 to fix all that stuff. And so the guy says, I'll offer you a thousand, which is a half of the 2000 or half of the bills for, you know, and he said, or, you know, I'll pay just half of whatever, you know, if you provide me with receipts. And RJ, I told him, I said, just, what do you think? He says, my gut is telling me to take this truck, take a thousand, take the truck, have our mechanic fix it, you know, it, and just see. And he says, I just have faith that this is the truck, Mom. He says, it's the only one out of all these that I've looked. He had test drove some. A lot of them were up way too expensive. And he knew it. So, anyway. I told him, I said, well, we've already bought a spare. We've already done the ball. You know. I said, there's something else you need to consider. And that is, is this truck getting ready to nickel and dime us? He says, I don't know, Mom. He says, but I'm going to tell you this. He says, I can afford things at nickel and dime because they're small repairs that cost just a little bit. He said, and they all maintain the truck. He says, what I can't afford is the transmission to go out or big things. And I said, exactly. And I said, do you think there's anything big? And he says, our mechanic says there's nothing big in this truck that will have issues. And so I was like, well, what do you want to do? And he says, I think I'm going to take the truck. So that, it's a good thing. So it, what it does is it, the guy is going to send him a thousand back. And then RJ is going to get everything done. And he already has the check for the truck. Um, so yeah, I think we have us a truck, <laughs> but I've been working on it all week because it hasn't been just, Go and buy a truck and do. And in Kansas, um, the he had to go up into Kansas to get it. We only live 11 miles from Kansas. Not a big deal. But Kansas pulls the tag when you sell it. That means RJ has a truck with no tag. In Oklahoma, you have five days that you can drive it on the bill of sale. And then you have to get it tagged. Well, he's not going to have the stuff because the bank in Kansas, their banks hold the title. So the title to this truck is at the bank. When the check clears and the guy pays off the loan, then 
which he hasn't done because RJ wasn't sure he was going to keep the truck. Ambulance going by. Uh, since RJ wasn't sure he was going to keep the truck, the guy hasn't run the check yet. So the check hasn't cleared. He hasn't paid off the bank. Once that happens, then that bank will send the title to our bank. Once our bank gets the title, they will do their thing and then they will send us the title. So Oklahoma does it with a um, title and release and they hold the title. So Kansas does. So it's going to take him a little bit of time to get it to where he can drive it. Um, I did look into getting a paper tag um, with the bill of sale. He can go and get a paper tag. It's like less than 10 bucks for 30 days. So, um, he's going to do that. But that has taken up all my time and all my brain power. Oh. So, yeah. Anyway, there's the story on the truck. There's my crochet. Um, it is getting to be time for me to go get dressed and get ready for work. And, yeah, I will see y'all next week. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs> all that good stuff. But, yeah. That's what's consumed my week. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.